I think we can all agree that the most important player on any NFL team is the quarterback. It's the most important position in all of professional sports. An NFL team, they can be elite at just about every other position on the field. Elite defense, elite running game, offensive line, receiver. But if you are not elite at the quarterback position, or at least good, passable at best, then you are not going to win a Super Bowl. If you don't have a quarterback that can consistently get your running backs and wide receivers the ball, then they're pretty much meaningless. You can have Michael Thomas as your wide receiver, best wide receiver in the NFL. If you have Johnny Manziel throwing him the football, Michael Thomas is pretty much useless. You look at Super Bowl winners. In almost every case, the winning team is elite at the quarterback position. Even when it's not. Like when the Ravens won back in the 2012 season with Joe Flacco. He was playing at an elite level late in the regular season all the way through the playoffs. Same both times that Eli Manning won the Super Bowl. The last 10 years... Listen to this list of Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Eli Manning, Joe Flacco, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, several times, Peyton Manning, Nick Foles, Patrick Mahomes. Eight of those guys that I just listed are franchise quarterbacks. Six of them are what I would consider elite quarterbacks, legendary. And I include Patrick Mahomes in that legendary category. The dude is already a legend. My point is, without a franchise quarterback, it is almost impossible to win a Super Bowl. The Trent Dilfers of the NFL are extremely rare. It is a rare thing that a a game manager leads a team to a Super Bowl title. That's why it was so shocking when Nick Foles led the Eagles to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. It was unexpected. I mean, Nick Foles beating Tom Brady? Nobody predicted that. Nobody expected that. What we're going to do today, I'm going to give you guys my top five quarterbacks that I would start a franchise with today. These are guys that if Drew Brees had retired this offseason, I would want them to take over in New Orleans. Now, you're not going to see guys like Drew Brees and Tom Brady on this list for obvious reasons. They're old. They only have one, maybe two years left in the NFL. The quarterbacks on this list are, in my opinion anyway, the best of the best at the position that have another five or ten years left to play. The list is going to go from number five to number one, with number one obviously being the best quarterback. We're going to start with number five, Kyler Murray. Some of you might completely disagree with me even putting Kyler Murray on this list. He's only been in the NFL one year. Didn't have what I would call a great rookie season, but it also wasn't that bad. I actually think it was an accomplishment that he led that Cardinals team, which was a group mostly of bums, to five wins last season. I think that was an accomplishment by Kyler Murray. He is a special player. I don't care that he's only 5'10". I don't care that he is small. Think about this for a second. Kyler Murray last year played behind one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. He didn't have a number one receiver. Larry Fitzgerald, at this stage of his career, is not a number one option at receiver. Last season... He didn't have a real option at tight end. He didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver. His running back most of the year was Kenyon Drake, a fumble machine. He had one of the worst defenses in the league. And he still managed to have the Cardinals with a chance to win almost every game, at least halfway through the season. Really, he had the Cardinals with a chance to win the game after the first four weeks of the year. The first four weeks were bumpy. But after that, Once Kyler Murray got acclimated, and it happened quickly, the Cardinals were pretty good. They finished the season 5-7, which isn't bad for a rookie quarterback. He dominated Russell Wilson and the Seahawks late in the year. 
did the same thing to Baker Mayfield and the Browns. This season for Kyler Murray is going to be a coming out party. It's going to be a coming out party for Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray, and the Arizona Cardinals. I think they're going to be good this year. And it will prove me right by putting him at number five on my list. He's going to have a number one receiver in DeAndre Hopkins. But more importantly, and this is why I included Kyler Murray instead of a guy like Carson Wentz. Kyler Murray is a leader. Plus, he just really is that good. He's elusive in the pocket. He's poised under pressure. If Arizona can fix the offensive line and actually give him some time in the pocket, he has the potential to be a top five quarterback in this league. All right, next up, number four, Lamar Jackson. How could you have Lamar Jackson as low as number four? I'm about to tell you why. These are quarterbacks on this list that I would start a franchise with, which means they need to be the answer long-term, five, seven, ten years. And I'm worried about the long-term prospects of Lamar Jackson. There are a couple of things that concern me with him. I've covered both of these issues in depth on this channel, but I'm going to mention them again here. One, we have never seen a quarterback in the history of the NFL make it long-term with the style of play that Lamar Jackson has. He is essentially a running back at the quarterback position. He can't continue to have 150-plus rushing attempts every year and expect to have a 10, 15-year career. There is a reason running backs in this league have the shortest career span. It is a brutal league, physical league. Their bodies start to break down as they get older. My second concern with Lamar Jackson, when a team faces him for the second time, he tends to struggle. He is 3-3 three and three in rematch games. But not only that, he has struggled in most of those games. Now that's a small sample size, but could be indicative of a larger problem. Do you guys remember the Wildcat offense? Took the league by storm back in 2008. Miami Dolphins used it as their primary offense that season. Went 11-5, and ended up winning the AFC East. What happened the following season? The Dolphins, they were still using the Wildcat, but they went 7-9. and nine. Why? Why is that? Because the rest of the league caught up to it. Defenses were prepared. The Wildcat was so successful because it caught the league by surprise. New England gave the league the blueprint to stop the Wildcat late in the 2008 season when they held the Dolphins in that formation to just 27 yards in a blowout win. That offseason, every defense in the league had a package to stop the Wildcat offense. It's a copycat league, and it worked. After that, we didn't see any more of the Wildcat. Lamar Jackson caught the NFL by surprise. Teams weren't prepared for a quarterback like this. The Chargers and the Titans have given the league a blueprint to stop Lamar Jackson. Both teams did it successfully in the playoffs. Now, I'm not saying that Lamar Jackson can't improve, can't expand his game, but it should be a concern that he struggles when facing opposing teams a second time. That is why he is only number four on my list and not ranked high. All right, let's get to number three, Deshaun Watson. What Deshaun Watson has been able to accomplish in his two full seasons as a starter in Houston is nothing short of remarkable. Now, why do I say that? Because he is constantly having to overcome the incompetence of Bill O'Brien, his head coach and general manager. Take last season, for example. The Texans' defense, supposedly Bill O'Brien's strength, his specialty. The Texans' defense was one of the worst defensive units in the league. They gave up nearly 25 points and close to 400 yards a game. The defense at Houston actually gave up more points than the offense scored. 
They gave up 30 or more points six times last year. And somehow, the Texans still ended up 10-6 and six and won the AFC South. Why is that? Because they had Deshaun Watson. He bailed them out time and again last season. Probably the biggest example was the playoffs. Remember that playoff game against Buffalo? They had him at home. Now, he got a nice assist from Josh Allen in that game, but Bill O'Brien was thoroughly outcoached by Sean McDermott the majority of that game. If not for Deshaun Watson's dominant second half, I don't think Bill O'Brien would have a job in Houston today. Now, he wasn't able to overcome the incompetence of Bill O'Brien the following week in Kansas City, but what quarterback could? I don't hold Deshaun Watson responsible for giving up that 24-point lead. That is all on Bill O'Brien. You could have put Tom Brady on that Texans team, and he wouldn't have been able to overcome the incompetence of Bill O'Brien in that game. All right, let's get to number two. And I really went back and forth whether or not to include him on this list. But ultimately, there is not a doubt in my mind that he belongs at number two. And it's Russell Wilson. The reason I went back and forth about Russell Wilson, he has been in the league so long already. And because he has had so much success, especially early on in his career, won a Super Bowl back in 2013, made it to the Super Bowl twice, It seems like Russell Wilson is much older than the 31 years old he actually is. Now, there is no reason for me to sit here and have to justify why Russell Wilson is on this list. He is an obvious choice. At 31 years old, he still has another 5, 7, maybe even 10 years of prime football left in him. Eight years he's been in the NFL. He has never had a losing season. Made the playoffs seven of those eight years. Strangely enough, Russell Wilson actually gives me hope about Lamar Jackson. His first four years in the league, he was a rushing machine. Now, he wasn't running at the rate that Lamar Jackson has or did last season, but he was damn close in both 2014 and 2015. But as he's gotten older, as Russell Wilson has gotten older, He is more prone to pass instead of run. More importantly, Russell Wilson has it. That it factor. It's that special thing that very few people have. It can't be measured. It's an intangible. Eight years in the NFL, not one person, not one former player has had a bad word to say about Russell Wilson. He is a true leader. A true face of a franchise. Last but not least, and number one should be obvious, I'll be honest, it should be obvious. It should have been obvious when you read the topic of this video. The Kansas City Chiefs just gave him an unprecedented 10-year contract extension yesterday afternoon. If that doesn't scream franchise quarterback, I don't know what does. You don't see 10-year contracts in the NFL. And of course, I am talking about Patrick Mahomes. Do I really need to explain to you guys why Patrick Mahomes is number one on my list? Why, if I had the choice of any quarterback in the league to start my franchise with, it would be Patrick Mahomes? I mean, the guy won a Super Bowl in his second season as a starter. He was Offensive Player of the Year in 2018. Would have challenged Lamar Jackson for MVP last season had he not gotten injured midway through the year. I mentioned that it factor a second ago with Russell Wilson. Patrick Mahomes is the definition of a guy with the it factor. This guy is going to be the face of not just the Chiefs. He's going to be the face of the NFL for the next 15 years. He has already accomplished more in two years than most players accomplished their entire careers. You know how many league MVP awards that Drew Brees has won? Zero. Mahomes won it his first year as a starter. He is the most exciting player in the league to watch. And he's only 24 years old. 24 years old. This kid is just getting started. And he obviously is at the top of anyone's list, not just mine, 
as the quarterback that they would choose to start a franchise with. All right, that's all for today. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for me. Click the notification bell to receive all updates from the channel. Leave me a comment in the section below. I'm interested to see what you guys have to say about this one. Do you agree or disagree with my list? Who did I leave off that you feel belongs in the top five? Carson Wentz, Cam Newton, Matt Ryan in Atlanta. Oh, oh, oh. What about Dak Prescott? I mean, <laughs> what about Dak Prescott? I would love to see one of you guys make a case for Dak Prescott being in my top five. Let me know in the comments below. You can follow me on Twitter at KC underscore BTL84. If you have any questions or a topic you would like me to cover, you can email me at BTLKC84 at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next time.